Hi, Mary Beth Thorngren with Thorngren Studio Arts, and I have a confession to make. I am a candy corn alcoholic. There, I've said it, it's out in the open. <sighs> this will begin our 11th series, and we are starting to head into fall, and I know it might be a little premature, but to me, changing of the leaves and it getting cooler does not indicate fall. Candy corn in stores, it's fall time. So here we go. Eight by 10 canvas. I've mixed up my first layer and it's kind of a sage green. So burnt sienna, light blue, turquoise, green, and white. So I'm gonna pull all those out you're going to use more white than the first three colors. Just a little a tad. Mix it out and get, get the feel of it. You may want to go lighter or darker. And that's going to be um, according to how much you put in from the burnt sienna, the blue, and the green. Then I've taken, went back, got my colors laid out according to the order in which I will be using them. I've got my burnt sienna and I'm going to uh, just lightly sketch out my image. Now I have printed this out once again. You will receive a copy of this so that you can see it closer. Um, hopefully you can have some candy corn. Um, I haven't taken it off from the stores just yet. <laughs> um, and then you can like set up an arrangement for yourself. Now this is up to you how many pieces you want to include in your composition. I always remind you that you are in charge. You can actually just choose to do one. But what works best is to always think of work, working in odd numbers as far as the composition goes. Uh, spread out is the way I chose to do it. My assistant may choose to do an entirely different thing. You can zoom in, you can look down, can hold it in your hand and study it. It's all up to you. So I will let you get a uh, pause and get caught up with me. And remember, as you're drawing, you may use a pencil or a thin brush with the burnt sienna, loosely keep it nice and fluid with the water. You're going to just start at an edge and watch the way that these lines fall. Don't think of them as candy corn. Think of it as a shape. And as you're going, you're gonna be telling yourself in your mind, this goes up, this goes down, this goes this way, this goes this way. Think direction as you're going. And that will help you get the shape down. And don't think of it as, oh, this is not looking like candy corn. That doesn't look like candy corn. Hopefully by the end, it will. But I just want you to pay attention to where things overlap and where they line up. The end of this one hits right about a third way down. The end of this one hits right at the curve. And then you're also going to pay attention to the negative space. I always talk about that. You get that correct shape in between the positive, and that will give you the positive shape. It's a neat little trick. So get caught up, and here we go. I'll put my big brush aside that I used for the overall first coverage and make sure that you're using brushes that are soft. Candy corn has a soft texture and as we go forward I want you to be mindful of that if we're doing which I hope to do uh, some you know colorful leaves or maybe we we do a landscape where I've printed it out and you can go and you'll like to make sure your brush is indicative of the texture that you're trying to achieve. So soft brush, medium brush. I um, already have this mixture of the sage color. I'll back up with you guys. <laughs> All right, I already have that sage. Look how quickly that happened. And I'm just gonna kinda go over some places that I might have missed during my initial coat. Make sure I have really good coverage in the background. We always start with the back, top, back. And I won't have to go back into that ever again if 
I get a nice coverage from the beginning. horizon line low back here. I'm not going to go too high up with this white. Just about there. Okay. Those look, they look like pieces of pie, don't they? Alright, so this harsh line that's happening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet my brush and hit back into that lavender 
mixture and just go softly on that and blend into the white. Pull it out a little bit more. Soften that up. I can even hit that purple, the darker when I'm at it too as I'm going. Look at that, softer. A little bit of water, a little bit of lavender. This one goes back. 
And believe it or not, when I'm painting in my own work, I talk to myself like this. I say, this goes back, this goes this way. Um, another trick you can do is take your brush and line it up. Don't move it, bring it here, and you know you've got the correct angle. You want to see something that's going back in space, it's kind of hard. Uh, this one is with its foreshort and it's looking right at me. I take my brush and I put it right on that angle. I don't move it, I come back and I've got the right angle. Pretty cool little trick. You can use your finger to measure how long. Like that one. Okay. So I'm going to clean my brush off really well because now I'm into the white part. Pull off all that yellow and orange. Make sure it runs clean. Same kind of thing. I've got this neat angled brush I always talk about. And I know that as I'm doing this, that's way too intense, but I'm just going to leave it there for now because that's going to be part of my modifying when I'm ready to refine get everything. And that one doesn't have a little white tip, but I like the white tips. It makes it something. I'm just going to improvise, and that one I didn't get one. I'm going to put a little white tip on this one. is my refine time. I can look back and see that I need more coverage because my first go round with the yellow and the orange, like I said, it's that transparent color. I can mix a little bit of the cadmium red with my orange. And go into some of these darker places. When I say darker. One thing I'll be doing in my refining stage, another thing I'll be doing is I'll get a thin brush and I'll mix burnt sienna and the purple. And I'm going to go back and really look closely into my reference and, and give one more shadow up underneath. And I'll use my thin brush to kind of refine some areas that are getting lost. Like this piece of corn, candy corn is in front of this one. So if I just redraw, that one line right there, and then I pull off and soften it, and shading that back piece. Want to talk about wherever there's a dark, there's a light. So see what that see what happened there. Now watch this. I'm going to put some white into my yellow, and then I'm going to come back with my light right there. What happened there is I I pushed this back and I pulled this forward. Push pull. A lot of more things can happen all through here in my refining stage. I've got a lot of uh, situations that I can take advantage of putting the dark and putting the light. So, um, that being said, we will head on to see what Adrienne has in store for her composition. And um, thank you for letting me come clean about the candy corn. Um, and we will look forward to seeing you next week. Stay well.